Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Homeowner Podcast. My name is Dan Keller, veteran mortgage advisor here in the Everett area. And every month I try to take, I try to get us out of the office and do an outdoors version because I'm an outdoorsman. I love it when I'm not slinging mortgages and helping people buy and invest real estate. I'm either out on the Puget Sound or like today, out on Lake Stevens, a local lake fishing for uh, some of the tastiest little critters Kokanee, they're landlocked salmon, and I couldn't have two better people to talk about this than Connor and Malachi, our guys, our friends down at John's Sporting Goods. So, hey, welcome back, you guys. Yep, thanks yep. for having us, Dan. Glad to be here, man. So this is going to be fun today. I was telling you guys a story of, uh, gosh, this is probably 10, 12 years ago. I had a little 12-foot aluminum boat, and, uh, well, prior to me buying that, I'd gone out with a friend of mine, Nate, Nate Fenton. You guys know Nate. And he took me out on the lake, and uh, with his little boy, I think Hudson was four, my son was four, his son was three or four, and he introduced me to Kokanee. And uh, what a fun fishery. So we, obviously, Nate knew what he was doing. We crushed it. We put a bunch of co kokanee in the boat. So I take my boat out two or three days later, and I try to mirror. I go down to John's. I buy, I buy all the right gear. And I go out, and I got the little cranker down riggers and everything. Yeah. And I go out, and I literally, we caught one in like five hours. It was horrible. It was just like I got skunked in front of my son. It was brutal. So um, I end up going and hiring this fishing guide. Uh, just I, I say, hey, up front, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you and I'm going to tip you really good, but I need you to teach me the tricks of, you, of the trade. How do you catch these coconut? I see you out here all the time and your rods are always bouncing. You got 20 rods in the water. And uh, he goes, no problem, man. And he had this, he, he put eight to 10 rods in the water, cruising at like nothing, like we weren't even hardly moving, and uh, leaded line. And I'm like, no way. And just the simplest little setup, little flasher, two little red hooks, shoe peg corn and crushed it. And so I went out and mirrored what he had taught me. And uh, I wasn't great like him, but I, I was actually better than I was before. So today you guys are going to share with us a couple of things. You might even give a better tip or strategy yeah. than leaded line. Absolutely. And, uh, and I'm, and this is perfect timing too, because we have a kokanee derby coming up here uh, on Lake Stevens. So I'll let you guys take it from here, but let's talk before we talk about Lake Stevens and the Lake Stevens Kokanee Derby. Let's talk about the various places that we can go out and fish for kokanee here in the Northwest. Yeah, yeah obviously one of them being Lake Stevens. Then you have uh, a couple West Side lakes that we do really well on. Uh, lake Rosaker is one of them mm -hmm. that we we have good luck on. Uh, lake Kavanaugh is an extraordinary oh, yeah. place for catching and better sized kokanee there for sure. Um, kind of up north, you have Lake Samish, not some Amish, but Lake Samish. Okay, that's Bellingham-ish area. Yep, yep. yep. Okay. Another really good lake for uh, for Kokanee, and then you have Whatcom Lake. Mm. Those are going to be kind of our producers as far as local to Everett, not too far away. You know, not not going over the mountains or way down south. Uh, those are all great lakes to to dump your boat in and catch some kokanees. So I mentioned earlier that a kokanee is a landlocked salmon, but what what is a kokanee? Kokanee, a little, uh, yeah, landlocks. It's a little sockeye, basically. <laughs> it has gorgeous yeah. red meat. Um, a lot of people, you know, think of them as trout, but yep. the, the meat on them is just extraordinary. Um, they're awesome to pan fry. And it's funny, me and my wife, we cook them quite a bit. We pan fry them mm -hmm. with the skin on. Mm -hmm. And one whole kokanee, we each get one side of the kokanee, and it's a perfect dinner for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, just very, very good taste in fish. Yeah, tasty fish. The, right, the meat does look like a sockeye. It's yeah. just bright, it's bright red meat. Yeah, and they're good size. If you didn't know any better, you'd think it was a trout because it's in a lake. Yep. Um, but they eat a lot better, and they fight like crazy. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're a little soft soft mouth critters so sometimes you can you know we always joke you catch you, you hook 40 of them to catch 20 yeah you know so don't get discouraged if you're out there losing fish uh, it's just sometimes it's a part of the deal well you just said soft mouth so that obviously is going to have an impact on the gear that you choose right oh, yeah. so why don't we start uh i know we're going to talk about tackle but let's talk about the gear first so uh, the rod that you use, the line, the setup. I mentioned a minute ago, leaded line. There's leaded line, there's downriggers. You guys have a, a more modern yeah. uh, technique that you're going to share with us. But let's talk about let's talk about gear. Yeah. yeah. So typically, coconut rods, you're going to be looking in that seven and a half to nine foot range. You're looking for a really, really, really limber rod, mm -hmm. like these lama glasses here. So this is an all glass rod, tip to butt. 
It's all glass, which okay. means that you're going to have a really slow, really soft. This one's rated two to eight pounds. Okay. It's going to help out with those soft mouth fish. You get a lot of shock absorption when they're doing their little head shakes. Okay. They tend to land a lot more. Uh, these guys here, they're, they're really, really soft. I would typically run these with your really light dropper weights, you know, either flat lining or a half ounce or so, and then great downrigger rods if you're going to run downriggers. Okay. Yep. Okay. If you guys wanted to jump up into some heavier dropper fishing, you know, say ounce and a half, two ounces, that's when we go to something like this. Still a super, super light rod, still helps keep those guys pegged, but a little more backbone to handle those heavier leads. This one's a Daiwa North Coast four to eight pounds. This one's actually a graphite rod, so it's a little faster action, okay. but still soft enough. And we'll even jump up into, you know, that nine foot range to help get a little more spread and to help not make our gear tangle as much. Okay, so and you obviously sell both of those down at John's, at John's Sporting Goods. What's a, what's a setup like this, like this white and red setup with the reel? Rod and reel, what are we looking at? So the rod here, these guys, they run 90 to $100, depending mm -hmm. on which model of the lamin glass you get. And then I have an Akuma cold water paired on top of that. It's a pretty good reel. And if you guys are into salmon as well, that's an awesome crossover for salmon. Okay. Um, I think they're 150 bucks now. Yep. Okay. Yeah, $150 for this one. This North Coast here, I always say that this is the best bang for your buck. You're going to get kokanee fishing. You got $50 on the rod. The reels are 120 This is a Daiwa Lexa. 100. That's a great setup right there. Yep. Yeah, right on. All right, so I was I was ranting and raving about the leaded line setup. Yeah. Tell me about this dropway setup that you yeah. guys recommend. Yeah, we run, uh, I mean, we use, we're starting to use these things just an extraordinarily amount of time. Okay. These are called little slidos. And uh, basically you have a black tube that your main line's gonna go through. Okay. And then you have a snap on here where you could snap different weights. Great for being versatile. You can you can change weight really fast. You can pull the weight off and run them by themselves. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do is that's going to go on our main line. And, and our main, we'd be running what? Uh, Twelve pound 12? mono. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that mono has a, l a lot of stretch. Typically, okay. mono's in that three to six percent stretch rate. Okay. Yep. That's going to help you out a lot as far as landing those fish. Okay. Yep. Pair the mono with a soft rod, and you tend to bring a lot more. Good. To yep. the okay. Twelve pound yep. mono. All right. And then. From in between our weight and our dodger, we want to call, we use a thing called a bumper. Okay. And that's just going to, it's going to keep some distance between our weight and our dodger. And I mean, half fast makes these perfect. They call them a little kokanee bumper. Uh, it's just basically a little wire leader with two snaps on the end. So one end's going to go to your main line. The other end's going to snap right to your dodger. So okay. it makes life really easy. You can, you can change your dodger really fast. And then with the slider, you can change weight really fast. Nice. Okay. And this time of year in the springtime, you're going to get fish anywhere from, I mean, right on the surface oh, yeah. where you're using no weight yep. to maybe down to 20 feet, which will be half ounce to an ounce of weight. So uh, you can kind of cover all the bases. I was going to say, is there a formula there? Half ounce, 10 feet, full ounce, uh, 20, 30? Or is there a... It's, it's, it's pretty rough. Yeah. I, I mean, if I'm looking to cover that, if, if I'm going out and I plan on fishing dropper leads, typically what I'll do is I'll run a half ounce or no weight at all on my back rods. Okay. Then as I move up, I'll increase my weight. And uh, like if I were to go out and do that where they're real shallow, I'd run, you know, maybe 75 feet and I'd have no weight. Okay. Yep. And then the next round forward, I'd have maybe 100 feet of line out. And I'd have a half or a one ounce lead. And okay. then for my final sets of rods, I might be 110, 115 feet back. And I might be running one, one. or one and a half okay. or two ounces. Okay, beautiful. And, and I see both these reels have line counters. So for yep. that exact reason, Absolutely. as you stagger rods. Right line on, counters guys. are almost imperative. Well, I just learned something new, and I'm going to try that next time. Yeah. That, that'll be fun. Okay. Yep. So... So there are three techniques that we talked about. One, you can use downriggers, and you, just, you have everything at your shop for that, from the, the crank downriggers to the, the lighter weight clips, yep. everything there. Yep. Leaded line, um, which I don't think you'd use those reels, right? Mine's more of a steelhead reel. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a bigger, it's a bigger Garcia. diameter line, yeah. so you got to have a little bit more spool to fit yep. Yeah, fit like that these up. cold waters are a little larger size, and that would hold, that would would hold some leaded line. Okay. Yeah, and Alexa's not so much. Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then you've got the, the technique that you just shared with us. So yeah. right on, you guys. All right, so we've got the rod. we got the reel set up. We've got the technique, how we're going get, to get the gear down. Yeah. 
this is my favorite part because I can just geek out at John's on all the gear you guys have. What's yeah. what's working? Um, what's worked in the past? What's kind of like your traditional and then some of the new stuff? Because I see some new things over there, some new flashers yeah, and some absolutely. new gear. Yep. I would say that probably one of the most notorious Dodgers ever created for Kokanee, especially on Lake Stevens, mm -hmm. is a dick. They call it a dick night clown dodger and this glows in the dark so yep. it works both on a day where it's sunny or days yep. where it's kind of murky out and cloudy um i would say gosh we have one of these in the water at all times yep. it's definitely I, one. I don't care what they're biting that day there's a clown <laughs> out. That, that one is in the water for okay. sure so dick night dodgers are absolutely phenomenal number two would probably be that color right there okay. yeah, it's the pink spatter same spatter. manufacturer dick night but that one that one's almost always a must as well and okay. what's nice about these dodgers is they have some weight to them so as far as our back rods, if we're running them with no weight, you're mm -hmm. still going to get down a little bit because they're a little heavier. Yep. Uh, and you're and you're not trolling really fast too, oh, so you're getting you're allowing you're, that you're to trolling drop. anywhere from one one point oh to one point five. There you go. You know, okay. you're, yeah, you're depending on your water temps. Yep. 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 And we're finally. I just ha got news today of the water temperature. A guy fishing today. It's fifty two degrees. Yep. So that fifty two to fifty five degrees is a phenomenal. That's the the temperature we're looking at when these kokanee kind of yeah, spark yeah. up. Yeah, we're knocking on the door of May right now, and and typically by May one we're we're pushing fifty. So that's yep, the that's yep, the magic absolutely. number. All right, so then let's go back. So you've got your uh, you, the bumper, yep. okay? You you click that you clip that onto your flasher. Now from your flasher to uh, let, let's talk about your terminal tackle here. This is endless. There this are, is a topic. There's lots of lots of different varieties of stuff, but I would say to focus on the most is going to be color. Okay. That's going to be your oranges, your pinks, mm -hmm. and your. I use a chartreuse or a dark green. So you kind of have four colors that really, really work well for these critters. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times. It's probably going to be hard to see, but we use a, just a wedding ring style yeah. spinner. So you're going to have a stack of beads with a blade in front of it. Now, are you custom tying these or are these things yeah. that you can just buy at John's? We do have them pre-tied, okay. uh, but I do like to tie them with a different hook. So yep. I'm going to tie with a, a number two drop shot hook. Okay. Uh, it's a thin gauge, a thin gauge hook. Um, it just plants in these kokanees really well. It mm -hmm. sticks them really well. And... Uh, yeah, just a great, great size to use. And red and black hooks, you can kind of go both ways. I know there's a there's a portion of people that just like to red, to run red hooks, okay. and there's nothing wrong with yep. that. Yep. But uh, yeah, you have so basically you have your wedding ring style spinners. Okay. And then a really great one is going to be like a little fly. We got these Schindler's flies, okay. which uh, we come in all the good colors for kokanee, and uh, a phenomenal lure. Probably one of my favorites. I would say every time we're fishing, we're going to have one of each of these on, a wedding okay. ring, a regular spinner, a Schindler fly, and then you can even go into a, a smaller hoochie. Well, let's, let's, let's help out our viewers. So it's uh, May 20th. There's a fishing derby, yeah. kokanee derby yeah. on Lake Stevens. Mm -hmm. So whether or not you guys will be out there or not, but let's say you are, what are you, what are you fishing? It's, oh. early, it's May, so it's early in the yeah. season. Water temps, a little north of 50. Yeah. Um, let's talk. Let's say we got four guys on the boat. What are you guys throwing out there? You know, as I'm entering into the bulk of May, if I'm running four guys, this is a perfect time to go out and buy your two pull endorsements because as many lines as you can get in the water is going to improve your success. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the big things that I tell everyone is the whole goal is to create a school of kokanee below your hook. Got it. If you can do that, you're going to bring in a lot more fish to your gear. If you're, if you ever notice guy could be running the same speed, same corn, same depth, same lure, same everything, but he has two lines out mm. and you have six, you're going to catch more fish. Yep. And these little critters, they're attached, they're attracted to commotion, right? Yeah. So the yep. shine, the flasher. Yep. If, you guys, if you guys ever watch underwater videos, it's pretty cool. You'll sit there and you'll watch them. One will come into your gear yeah. and it'll sit there and follow it and follow it and mm -hmm. follow it. And then another one and then another one and then another one. And soon enough, you have a whole school of kokanee following your presentation. So okay. It's yep. pretty cool. Okay. Yep. But if I were to go out there and I were to go out and fish, I'm definitely going to have some of these beaded spinners. Yep. You know, like Connor was saying, your pinks, your oranges, your chartreuse, probably have at least one or two of those. Same thing with your flies. And we also run these. I don't know if you guys can pick that up, but there's a little blade right there that yep. we'd run in front of our Schindlers. Those are excellent. Have a few of those definitely rigged up. Um, okay. Little bit more of a cold water tactic, but uh, Elgin's they make a product called the God's Tooth that works yep. extraordinarily well in your colder temps. But as we get into our warmer temps and start getting into the heart of May, spinners really are your predominant producer. Okay. Yep. Okay. 
and uh, I see a a, a, a jar of shoe peg. So oh, yeah. you, you got to put corn in there, but it's gotta a specific kind of corn. Yeah, we use that shoe peg corn. Uh, this one Potskis makes. It's just you can buy it. It's mm-hmm. cured. It's ready to roll right off the shelf. Okay. The only thing I would add to this would be some sort of smell or a scent that I'm kind of aiming for. Okay. Um, but I would say the real hardcore, diehard Kokanee guys, they're going to go out and buy a jar of shoe peg corn or a can of yep. shoe peg corn. Uh, they're going to cure it with some sort of cure. They're going to dye it. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to, you know, typical, typical colors is going to be green, uh, pink, and orange. Okay. They always generally are going to have all three colors. And then you're going to have different smells in each one of these corns. And uh, as the day goes, you're going to just try and find the recipe yep. for that day. And that could be garlic. It could be bloody tuna, anise, krill. Uh, I mean, the list is long, long, long. That was, that's what I was going to ask you, the different scents for kokanee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've heard of garlic. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Garlic, it's, it's a really good one. And as we get into later May and into June with this, as your water temps really start pumping up and start hitting that 60, 62, 65 degrees, that's where garlic really starts coming to play. But as of now, we still have cooler temps. We're still in that kind of just mm-hmm. getting into the money of kokanee temps. Your your tuna, your krill, your anise, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, that's going to be your bread and butter. Cool. Yep. Okay. Perfect. I love that. So I have found that um, Jay's downtown yep. Lake Stevens, down by the lake, down by the launch, they sell cans of shoe corn. And then Hagen's up, mm-hmm. up there in Frontier Village, they sell... Uh, yeah. Shoe peg corn. I, another so. trick to getting that tuna scent. Uh, if you buy tuna fish mm-hmm. and they have it either mixed with water or yep. they have it mixed with the oil. Okay. And the oil is the one you're aiming for. So you'll crack that open and dump dump that oil into, oh, there you your, go. into your corn. And that that's absolutely a game changer. It's a phenomenal way to go. There's a hack. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I see a couple of uh, flashes over there I haven't seen before. Is, that, is this something new or... Um, new, new to us. Okay. So these these Aero Flash Dodgers here, little different shape to them. They're gonna have a lot harder kick than the Dick Knights. Uh, okay. These guys also flatline well. That that is one thing we didn't really touch on. Great. If you guys are planning on running dropper systems and you are not planning on adding any additional lead, you need to have the right Dodger. Mm-hmm. You know, if you guys are going out there and running like a Shasta Sling Blade yeah. or even sometimes these Brad's Dodgers can give you a little bit of trouble. You need to have the right dodger in order for it to sink. Otherwise, they'll pop up and start spinning on you. Got it. But these and the Dick Knight Dodgers we spoke on earlier are going to be excellent options for flatlining. Okay. Now, if the Kokanee are wanting a little harder thumb, I typically go to these guys. This Nickel Moon Jelly is a really good one. And this one's called Sherbert. That one's probably my number one. And then there's also, there's 90 different colors of these Aero Flashes, but they all work well. Sierra Sam's pretty good, especially on cloudy days. But uh, you got to have the right dodger in accordance to your technique. If you're downrigger fishing, you can use whatever you have. They they all work. But yeah. the dropper and the flatline fishing, yeah. that's going to be a different ball game. Yep. One of the things that I learned early on too is leader length. Mm-hmm. Why don't we talk yeah. about that real quick? Because that's, that's important. That's heavily debated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there there's lots of different theories out there as far as leader lengths go. Personally, myself, I like to use. I always use fluorocarbon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a little bit stiffer line, so it's going to give it a, a nice kick behind that dodger. Okay. And I'm a tw- 12-inch guy. I run a 12-inch leader almost the whole year, and I, I don't have any trouble with that. I do pretty well with that length. And a lot of the times, I set up my leaders with loops on the end. So oh, I see that. Yeah, yeah these okay. are all these all have loops on them, and I was we were laughing about it. You can run pink one day and catch every single fish on a pink spinner, and you can go out the next morning and you won't catch a single fish on them. So you have to be ready to adapt and okay. be able to switch your gear out really fast. And that loop makes it quick, yep. quick and easy. Yeah, absolutely. I was telling Connor about a day I had last year where uh, it, was, it was a pretty pretty good day of fishing. We had 29 out of our 30 fish by about eight. But, uh, I mean, I had the smorgasbord. I had all the money in the <laughs> world thrown down at these fish, and all they wanted was a green wedding ring. Wow. Uh, just basic. So. Wow. Okay. But, uh, touch a little bit more on that leader length. Um I, I'm the same way as Connor. I, I troll fast. I call it fast, but it's 1.4 to 1.6. Yep. And I run a little longer leader than a lot of guys. I run that 12 to 14-inch leader. But there's a lot of room to play here. A lot of guys will say run an 8, 10-inch leader, but mm-hmm. a lot of times they're trolling a little slower. Yep. Your leader length is going to correlate to your action more so than anything else. 
guys. Okay. And the slower you troll, typically, the shorter the leader, so you get the same action. Mm-hmm. Vice versa, the faster you troll, the longer the leader, so you achieve that same mm-hmm. action. So a good general rule of thumb is you're going to go 12-inch leader, 12, 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon. You like yep. 12? Yep. 12? 12 pound fluorocarbon. Okay. And approximately one mile an hour. Yep. That's the general. If you were just to kind of peg something in the middle and then, you know, lengthen your leader, increase your speed. Yep. Okay. Certainly. Cool. Yeah. Fair enough. No, that's, uh, believe it or not, for these little kokanies, there's a strategy in there. There's tactics that you've got to follow, or you can go out there like I, like I said, you threw everything down there and. Yeah, they went about it. Absolutely, yeah. little things can make or break mm-hmm. your day. Kokanee fishing. Yeah, a lot of guys, like I said, they kind of think of them as trout, but you can go out there and they'll make you make you look like a fool. They're, they'll humble you quick. They yeah. can, they're a tough critter to catch, even though they're just little things. Especially but especially uh, when the guy next to you puts fifty in the boat, and you're looking at the five you have in the cooler, <laughs> yeah. and you're wondering what's going on. Absolutely. So. Well, since we're talking about Lake Stevens, because of the Derby coming up, um, let's talk. And I'll throw a map up on the screen here in a minute. What are some areas and there's lake stevens is i mean you've got the downtown launch and then you've yep. got the what do they call it? the davies beach launch the yep. one Wyatt park Wyatt parks yep. yeah right down from target right yep. so you got two launches there i try to stay away from that one and go downtown it's a little less you know a little less traffic but mm-hmm. um those are the two landmarks let's talk about locations they used to have an aerator out there yep. Yep. which that was a great landmark that, i think that, they got rid of that right yeah yeah the, the the troll's still there you still can fish around that mm-hmm. the actual aerator itself not there. Okay. Yeah, but okay. just careful there because they still have lines and yep. stuff okay. hanging off of it. There's so. plenty of kokanee gear that's been taken to that cable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to say it's, what, 40 feet or deeper is where you kind of can run into problems there. Absolutely. So that, that's a really good spot. That's one spot we definitely focus on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always tell people if you can go, if you can draw a point of the middle of the lake in okay. Lake Stevens, okay. that's another spot where we really do well. <laughs> I mean, it attributes to if you're out there and you're seeing fish jumping, okay. uh, I, I typically will chase those jumping fish and I'll go and, uh, you know, they could be at one location one day and another the other day. Um, but the middle of the lake is a, a really good place to start. Um, another place is Purple Pennant, which oh, yeah. is going to be closer to that, uh, what is it? Sunset. Yeah. That, that's the the public access there. It's yep. kind of, it's so you come, if you come out of, of the North Cove, so the downtown launch, Purple Pennant's right east. over here, yep. Yep. Right. to the east, yep. east side of the lake. Yep. yep. Okay. And then the other place, the wind blows a lot of the times from the east to the west. Okay. So in theory, it's blowing all of, especially if they're on the surface, it's blowing a lot of their food to the west side of that lake. Okay. And uh, that can be a phenomenal spot too. Okay. Or uh, mouth of North Cove. That's that's a really popular troll. Yep. Just right out here in front. Yep. You, yep. you launch your boat in North Cove, troll mm-hmm. right out. Once you get past the brake line, then you can just start doing a north-south troll back and mm-hmm. forth and back and forth. And that's yep. a really good area. Just like just right down the right smack dab down the middle, right like this, or way out in the middle? Uh, or a little just clo- kind of right where your mouse is. Right, right here. here. Okay. So right out and right out when you get past the, what is it, the no wake zone yep. buoys? Yep. Yep. Okay. Just past the no wake. Down yeah. there and, and just go north-south there, huh? Yep. Okay. And like you said, as the winds, if the wind is blowing east west, head over past over yeah. in that cove over by Lundeen yeah. Park, and and yep. uh, I've trolled on that east side of the lake, and we're not seeing no jumpers, not yeah. seeing any fish on our fish finder, so we make a break over to the west side of the lake, and they're all congregated down there. On mm-hmm. the other, so it'd be on the west side of the area. Yeah, what, the whatever area side up. the food's getting blown on, and when yep. you have yep. that southeast wind, it's typically going to go blow it to the northwest corner of the lake. There you go. Yep. They're, they're always going to be where the food is. Uh, yep. One thing that we forgot to touch on is Connor was just mentioning jumpers. Yep. Yep. Another thing that I recommend everyone do is the P-line. It's called a coconator. Okay. Yeah. It's just a little dart-esque jig. They weigh a half ounce. When you see those jumpers, go ahead and pitch that into it. And if you guys have ever twitched for humpies or coho okay. or anything like that, do the exact same thing, but into a school of coconut. You'll be surprised how many you get jigging. Really? It's pretty, pretty oh, efficient. Yeah. Now, another thing to think about there is say you have two guys and you have four rods in the water, you can't pitch out a jig because now you're fishing with five rods yeah. with two guys. Yes. Yeah. You can use your two pole endorsement, but you just gotta you gotta be careful in that regard. I love that. And that's a great reminder that coconut are not deep. There when you know, when we're fishing them out there, you're in Top of the water to yep. what, 20, 25 feet? Yeah, yeah. yeah springtime for sure. As, mm-hmm. as as we get into summer, those those critters are going to drop. Okay. You know, we'll catch them from, you can get them 50, 60, okay. 70 feet for sure. Okay. But uh, generally the springtime fishery and then for the derby, May 20th, you're mm-hmm. going to be in that 
top 20 feet of the water column. I love it. I love it. You guys are sponsoring the Derby, yeah? Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Yep. Yep. Okay, so you guys, are you selling tickets at John's? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we haven't gotten them quite yet, but okay. I'd imagine within the next week or two, we'll okay. have them down okay. there. To so come down, sell. get your tickets at John's. What is it? I, uh, I had it pulled up a minute ago, about 20, I think it's $25 for, uh, I think that's the case. I'll pull it up yeah. here in a second. 25 for adults, I kids 14 and under, I believe, are free, yep. right? Yep. Cool. And there's some really good prizes. Prizes this year, what, Derby prizes, 1000 bucks for first place. Heck yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, 14 and under are free. It's Saturday, May 20th. Um, so, yeah, 12th annual Kokanee Fish and Derby. Get your tickets at John's. Um, as we wrap up, missing anything? Any Ooh. tips, t- strategies, tactics? If we covered it pretty good. Yeah, it's Kokanee are schooling fish. So, you know, the more rods you can put in the water, I know it's it's not that fun to run six or eight rods, but it, it'll absolutely make a difference. You'll get used to it. It just takes time. Yeah, and then like Malachi was saying, your lighter weight's going to be in the back and your work, your weight will yeah. be added as you get closer to your bow. And that'll keep you as far as tangles and keep you away from all of that kind of stuff. I love it. Yeah, and I love the the new strategy you talked about with the drop weight, so you don't have to uh, yeah. go out and buy down riggers and, yeah. yep. and stuff. So I think, I think one last tip that I have for you guys is if you guys get on fish, don't leave them. Mm. What will happen is you'll come through, you'll make a pass, you'll get one or two or three or four on, and a lot of guys will just keep on trucking. Mm-hmm. What I would do in that situation, as soon as I stop catching fish, I spin that boat around. Okay. Full U-turn, I'm coming back through there. And typically, you can sit there and ping-pong back and forth through that school until you don't catch them, and then go ahead back on your jaunt around the lake to yep. try and find them again. Yep. I love it. Yeah, just don't leave biting yep. fish. Yeah, this was valuable. This was, I learned a couple things today. So uh, two things. I want you to make sure you head over to Facebook. And if you're not following the John Sporting Goods page, I want you to follow the John Sporting Goods page. You guys are doing a great job getting helpful information out, the uh, lingcod opener, the black mouth, just everything. everything, Anything that's in season, you guys are giving uh, really great information out over there to, to help guys like me put more fish in our boat. So follow the John Sporting Goods. Number two, head on down. You guys are you're locked and loaded with a ton of kokanee gear right yep. now. Um, everything that you saw here, you guys have in stock. And, uh, and then talk with you guys. That's what yep. separates you guys from all the other sporting goods uh, stores out there is you actually have anglers that work with for you and yep. with you guys. Yep. So you guys are actually out fishing for these things and, and sharing Absolutely. best practices and what's, what's working right now versus what was working last year. So yep. um, really appreciate you guys and uh, can't wait to have you back. I know we're, we're just getting into the fun part of the year. Absolutely. So we'll have you back as we head into the summer, but uh, appreciate your guys' time today. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for Dan. having us, Dan. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.